Right, you're watching AM um, Live, the state of economy. And of course, today we're training our, fo our focus on what is happening in the market. Power uh, has been also a very contentious, uh, contentious subject in the recent months. And we want to train our focus also with our panelists today to discuss power and a raft of other issues as far as the state of economy is concerned. Now, American energy firm General Electric has acquired a 20% stake in Amo Power worth an estimated 40 billion shillings. Amo is a company that will own and will own, I should say, and operate Kenya's 1,050 megawatts Lamo coal-fired electricity generation plant. This purchase is part of a new clean coal. This morning we signed um, an investment and collaboration agreement with uh, GE and we are proud to inform you that uh, what this sees is the entry of the largest power development, power manufacturing, power supplying company in the world partnering with us to develop what is going to be the most advanced uh, coal power plant in Africa. has the highest and the most sophisticated what we call, the, what we call uh, emission control systems, which is really the systems which will capture these emissions and uh, prevent them from going in the atmosphere and therefore uh, affect the local populations. Right, and of course we have our panelists this morning. Remember, you're watching in the market here on AM Live. We want to discuss, of course, the cost of power in the country on the state of economy. We're looking at a raft of other issues as well as far also as the Nairobi Security Exchange is concerned and also from the counties as well and regionally also we shall try and see how the economy is developing regionally. Allow me to introduce to you this morning Alec Ansachu, who is the CEO of Rich Management, also a financial consultant. We have with us as well Robert Shaw, who is a management consultant as well, and also a columnist with uh, Daily Nation. We do have with us as well the CEO of Nairobi Securities Exchange, Geoffrey Odundo, who is with us with this, this morning. We do have also Nderitu Muridi, the governor of Like Keep Here this morning, and Gabriel Negatu, who is the regional director of African Development Bank with us this morning. Right, good morning, gentlemen. Right. Good morning. And good, good morning. to see you. Thank you for joining us today on uh, the state of economy. Right, we want just to get into it. We can see also General Electric and AMO uh, the partnering here. The cost of power has been, you know, uh, flying way through the roof and people have been complaining so far. But even also, we do know that coal also remains a very contentious uh, source of power uh, around the country, people have been also raising uh, their, you know, reservations about coal. First of all, in light of what we're going through as a country, we know, yes, we need other sources of power, renewable energy, but is coal the way to go? Because we see other countries, uh, China itself also, you know, they're folding up as far as coal is concerned. So where do we actually start when it comes to the coal debate? Let's begin with you, Alec Ansachu. Okay, my, my view is, interestingly, firstly, that we actually have surplus power on the grid mm -hmm. uh, versus consumption, which is quite a, quite a, quite a situation to be in, um, especially when you compare and contrast some other countries like South Africa, yes. which did not make the investments and then suffered all this load shedding. And if you go to other African countries, you find that a lot. So that's the first thing to, to note. The second thing to note really is we're sitting atop, I think, the, you know, the seventh biggest geothermal resource in the world, um, in the Rift Valley. Mm -hmm. We've got endless sunshine. We've got a lot of wind up in Turkana. So f from my perspective, and given the global trends, I don't see why everyone is, is, is looking at this coal investment. I, th I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, from, my, from my perspective, I think there's ample more green, better, better energy that can be utilized. So conceptually, that's my issue with it. I, I think it's, I don't understand uh, the, the logic of it, given that we have other uh, resources which are 
uh, tappable and probably uh, and much and renewable. And to me, that's the way the future is going. Mm -hmm. Um, looks to me like uh, equipment for equity trade, from what I can read in that in that uh, st statement. Uh, GE get to supply a lot of equipment into it, and uh, that, that that seems to me the transaction. Mm -hmm. Equity trade. What what's uh, your position, Robert? Good morning. Well, my my position I think is pretty well known. Um, I would concur com totally with with with, with what you've said. Um, we don't need it. We have surplus power going right up to about 2035, I think. Um, plenty coming on stream uh, without anything to do with, with the coal plant. As to the coal plant, um, coal is a dirty power. It is environmentally nasty stuff. Um, I've sat and listened to various experts um, on, on water pollution, air pollution, concerning the, the coal plant and uh, the consequences are devastating. Mm -hmm. It would actually literally kill a lot of that area. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I think it's a crazy decision. Do you, do you think there was a wide consultation that was done before people now ventured into coal uh, that we see, yeah, this project is going full steam ahead and uh, you know, maybe even not, the not, not really, not concerned. even the, 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 the Im environmental impact assessment was done properly. So no, it wasn't. It wasn't. wasn't. No, it, it, it uh, and I, I would, I would argue that if it was done properly again, um, it wouldn't see the light of day, mm -hmm. I, in many ways. Right. Many of ways. course, we've seen also people from uh, the coastal region. They've been also uh, raising concerns about the, the coal plants and uh, the environmental impact that maybe is going to adversely affect them. So all, also, those clarion calls are not really taken, uh, uh, you know, into account. Uh, let's hear from you, Geoffrey. I think I'll probably take a, a different tangent to it. Um, do we have surplus power now? Yes, we do. Uh, but is there? Uh, are we are we sitting on on opportunities that we can we can be able to attract? For instance, big industry. Do we have power to to support that? I really don't think so. Some of these um, large heavy industry are looking for one of the one of their key criteria is, is the amount of power that you have, the capacity you have. So if we want to attack uh, heavy industry, then we have to continue exploiting the potential of power we have. I share the concerns around the environmental impact mm -hmm. when it comes to coal, um, but I think the it's it's really about probably diversifying the power mix we have. Yes. Uh, but I think uh, what will be more important is what sort of technology are they looking at to create that clean coal uh, uh, power emission. That that's really what I'm I'm, I'm keen to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we still need to continuously exploit our power potential to, to just create the, the buffer we require for heavy industry to, uh, to come to market. Mm -hmm. So we have the coal plant, we have also the nuclear that also we're trying to tap into as well. Uh, the environmental uh, impact assessment they say has not also been exhaustively done. Mm -hmm. uh, coal, nuclear, uh, where are we headed? Mm -hmm. Let's hear from uh, right. His Excellency Governor Derich Moreti. <coughs> Uh, look, uh, just a few years ago while I was serving as assistant minister, I was sent to Singapore to talk to the business community to, mm -hmm. to look at their appetite to invest in Kenya. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, with Julius Muya and other technocrats. And after dinner, after our presentation at dinner, the chair took me aside and he said, young man, uh, you know, never embarrass yourself like that again. Because I was talking about, oh, at that time, I think we had uh, 1,350 or 1,500 megawatts uh, installed. <laughs> said, I mean, that is teeny tiny. So when we came back, it forced us to ask the question, what are the power needs of the economy of Vision 2030? Now, look, the big economists are here, so I have to be careful. But that time, when we are talking about 2010, 2011, 2012, the best guesstimates were something like 15,000 megawatts. That this economy that we envision having uh, industrializing high quality of love and so on, the best guesstimates of the needs for power mm -hmm. was, was 15,000 megawatts. Now, 
I know we are at uh, 2,400. Yes. And, and that, uh, I guess, is excess in terms of our need now. But if we really want to have uh, that economy that we dream about of Vision 2030, we have to do better. I'm glad uh, Ali spoke to the question of South Africa. I mean, South Africa has had to do two, not one, two coal plants of about 4,900 uh, megawatts each in order to try and uh, stabilize the circumstance. So uh, I, I hear the experts on the environment, on all the other things, but I think we, we, we have to make up our minds uh, whether we, we want that economy of Vision 2030 or whether we want to tinker around uh, on the edges. Right. China, China has folded, you know, the plans of actually having uh, coal as a source of, of power for themselves, and yet they're the people who will come and, uh, you know, put up the plant in the cost. So are we trying to, you know, see the flip side of, in one country, you know, you're not upholding, you know, coal as a source of power, yet when you come to Africa, then we can actually have these particular plants. Gabriel. Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks, Debal. A, a couple of points here. Uh, these plants are plants that we're going to have around for the next 50 years or so, okay? So, we ca as the governor said, it's not for, for today, but it's definitely for Vision 2030. Yes, China has stopped coal plants, but this is what you call the old coal, dirty coal. The plant that's coming up in Lamu is completely different. You know, there are many countries today that actively use coal, and Japan, for example, is one of them. And I'm told you can go to a coal plant in Japan and you can literally eat off the floor because it's so clean. This is the new technology in coal that allows us to have coal, protect the environment, and still generate the kind of power we need. Secondly, we need to think about coal as a commodity. Let us stop about saying, you know, this is what we need today and tomorrow and so on. Coal is a commodity that can be bought and sold across the continent. We are in the process of connecting the East Africa Power Pool and the Southern Africa Power Pool, which would allow Kenya, if it had excess power, to export and sell this coal all the way to Cape Town or all the way up to Cairo mm -hmm. through the power pool, the wheeling agreements and so on. So never mind that we have excess power today. Kenya's economy is just beginning to get into the manufacturing sector, which is going to demand tremendous amount of energy. At the rate we're going, even though we may have excess power today, look at the prices. I mean, if there is excess supply, the prices should be coming down. You don't see the, that happening, the, the price of power. Therefore, we, I think Kenya needs this plant, but we need to be very vigilant on the environmental, social, human, all that environment that needs to take place. And one of the advantages of having GE buy into this mm -hmm. partnership is that they are supposed to help ensure the environmental and other standards that's required to make sure that we don't get a dirty plant from, from somewhere else, but that this is indeed state-of-the-art uh, coal plant. Mm -hmm. But the fact that, uh, yes, we can't see the, the sentiments on the floor does not, uh, you know, they get the fact that we have pollutants which are invisible, right? Mm -hmm. That we've not done maybe exhaustively uh, our research to see, yes, if it's purely uh, clean and it can be used as a source of energy. We know what happened with, uh, uh, with the VW uh, scandal on the d diesel gate. You know about it uh, with the defeating devices as well, right? That people will also game the system and still let out a lot of pollutants that like the nitrate oxide that was happening also in uh, in america ali can search you uh, uh, well regarding vw and uh, and and those stories i think there's so many lessons to be drawn from that one is if you are in such a situation get in front of it don't don't try and spin a story and you know become very clear and get your facts straight and get ahead of it so it, it's a very interesting space in the financial markets as, as to how people handle that sort of crisis. Um, you know, it's not the CEO probably did not know what was actually happening down at that level, and, mm -hmm. and then was being accused of it. So, 
quite a fascinating discussion can be had around how companies react to that problem. I think, you know, my starting point is that most companies don't want to gain the system. Um, but in, in today's modern age, we should be able to pick up anybody who's gaming. Today, you can put up equipment in Lamu which would measure um, the, the, pollution, the pollutant level. Yes. And it's very scientific. I think Safaricom are actually doing something like that with their masts to monitor the amount of pollution. Mm -hmm. But you're quite correct. I mean, you know, from my perspective, I think uh, what has disappointed me is things like the wind power, we're paying penalties, we haven't been able to evacuate it. I mean, uh, well, well, what w I haven't found any justification for that, right, other than extremely poor planning. And sometimes I think we've got to tie the cause and effect. So when I look at it uh, as an energy mix, I appreciate that this is clean coal. But the global trend, when you look at the consumption of coal in the world, it's going down, right? I mean, the, the graph is just going down. Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? It's telling me that the market is not looking at this. It, it, it's, not, it, it's not economically feasible and people don't want to do it anymore. Why is that? There is a clear reason for that. So I think from my perspective, I think nuclear is out of the question. I would prefer to forget about coal. I would prefer to be ramping up. I thought in Laikipia you were looking at a big, very big solar farm. I mean, solar power today, I, what is the deal Dubai have done on solar power? It's like three US cents. I mean, you know, why aren't we just going crazy on that front? So from, a, from, from my perspective, I don't think it's strictly necessary, frankly. So it seems also we are torn in between. Uh, may, I, may I just because he asked uh, yes. yes, in fact, you, uh, uh, 40, 40 megawatts, there you go. 40 megawatts of mm. solar mm. at Rumuruti, mm. delayed because uh, the uh, transmission line yes. uh, linking the Mount Kenya grid uh, in, uh, from Nyanyuki to Rumuruti is delayed. Yes, uh, delayed because of way leaves uh, issues. Including where live by uh, you know KDF and uh, finance by by Gabriel, um, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and look you know we, uh, in fact uh, cost escalating because of these way live questions, and I hear you also that we haven't evacuated uh, the wind and, and we are paying uh, again because the transmission line and the the, the contractor uh, going bust and things like that, but. Ali, I think if we are trying to, if we accept the economist's estimate of 15,000 megawatts for Vision 2030, hmm. it means we have another 12,500 megawatts to go. To me, that means there is plenty of space, in fact, for the clean uh, power to, to, to come on board, and we need to do better on executing. I think, for example, this question of where leave, we have to revisit uh, the laws on compulsory acquisition and so on. I mean, why should people, including our very own KDF, stand in the way of a transmission line and delay it for two and a half, for three years, while investor, private capital, has been raised to ensure that we have clean power at Rumuruti. So I think, uh, on the on the on the on the and it is not just uh, transmission lines. Many projects have suffered significant delays because of this question of where lives. And I think we should revisit. And it should not be possible for private interests uh, to to. I mean, we have a privateer just opposite uh, Old Pajita, a, a lawyer for you know who has refused, <laughs> I mean, which is going to absolutely escalate the cost of this, you know, this and, and it should not be allowed to happen. We should be able uh, to ensure that uh, uh, public investments that require way leave, uh, obtain that way leave with absolutely no delay. So uh, to sum it, look, we are going to 15,000 megawatts. I think, Ali, we, we, we have to look for every plausible... So the investment, I mean, or the, the work in relation to the coal plant mm -hmm. ought to be now on the environmental safeguards. What really is, is happening there? Will wool be pulled? <laughs> or, uh, or will the environmental safeguards actually be there? Is it really a clean plant? If so, what assurances 
a can we as a public count on? Yeah. Uh, but certainly, I, I hold the view that we need to bring uh, uh, as much power. And I agree uh, with, with what uh, Gabriel was saying, that the answer to our short-term uh, excess power is our ability to sell it to others. And that is what uh, the investment in, the, in the connecting the power pools is about. But, but, but the questions will, will be, or we have something to yeah, say. Yeah, I've just, just co concur with the point. There is plenty co coming on stream. You've okay. given a very good example. The Lake Takana one is, is massive. It's the cheapest wind energy potentially in the world. Yes. Um, same issue, I think, way leaves. Mm -hmm. So I think what we've got to be trying to do is unblock those mm -hmm. impediments. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we've, those are two examples. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's, there's many more more. So there's actually loads of potential power that we've got there waiting, and, and, and investments. I mean, I'm sure you've had investors coming to you and saying, look, this is what we've sunk into it. And please, could you kick someone's bottom? Because it's, <laughs> you know, and so I think there's, that, that's, that, that's really what, what, what we need to be looking at. But Just yes. to uh, add to that, I think, it, again, it, it all boils down to the investment, um, the investment consideration, I mean, uh, these are investors who will have probably scanned the entire power space and seeing where 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 can they be able to exploit at more cost effective way. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, doing a geothermal plant is not cheap. Uh, it's clean energy, right? But it's not cheap, and, and really you have to really be very careful about it. Uh, so I think there's an exp uh, there's, these are minerals that are available that can be exploited. And it's really around how do you tap into it, and, and probably they've done their, 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 their assessments, and, 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 and really, it's, it's a great opportunity. So I think we must not close out investors who are looking at a wider space. I mean, the whole space, I believe they've done their feasibility studies and, and assessed that this is, is one great opportunity that can be used. Right, but the question will be then, why would we have ambitious plans like uh, a coal plant, one, while at the same time we've not really exhausted fully what we do have on the ground, like what we're talking about, the electric kind of wind power, where we know that uh, already the uh, Kenyan government is being fined 5.7 billion shillings for delays, as you mentioned, agreed additional penalty, 1 billion shillings monthly, should Kenya fail to connect the plant to grid beyond June due to lack of power lines uh, built by Ketraco, right? Th that will be the question. Why can't we complete one project before we embark on the other project that is also so ambitious? We don't know what is uh, actually the tripping wire with this particular project. Maybe uh, De Deval, uh, uh, Gabriel is funding the project. He can tell us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Th th this is a very good example. The Lake Turkana, yes, we are funding <coughs> it. And uh, it is through no fault of GOK. This is one case where the contractor, a European company, went bankrupt. Simply went bankrupt and delayed the connection, the transmission lines. But we, we, we can't uh, not raise accusatory fingers to the government because they did do their due diligence in the first place. That, that is the case. At, at the time this project was conceived, and you're talking about close to 10 years, this thing has been in the work for, been here about seven years. Long before I came, the, the, this discussion was going on. So. At the time, the company was solvent and all that. Then came the financial crisis in Europe and so on in this specific country, and the company went bankrupt. Government since then has been scrambling to put together, uh, to negotiate with the government, uh, to sort things out. Uh, the CSS have gone to Europe to work this out. But now that has been resolved, and there's a new company. There are a few local and international who are putting this thing together. The thing about wind and solar, as much as we like to say they're clean and green and what, 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 you can't power industry with these intermittent sources of power. You know, Lake Turkana, 380, whatever, 400 uh, megawatt, but we don't have the technology today to store that power. The technology simply doesn't exist where you can store the wind when it's high and then use it later. It's, it's sort of live. Whereas coal is what you call base load. It's 24-7 on demand. Hydro is the same, but again, hydro, then you'll hear the dams are low and it hasn't rained and what, what. So w in terms of mixing, the
the, 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 the energy mix in Kenya, I think this coal plant, provided we remain vigilant on the environmental, and as Ali Khan said, we have the technology. You can count the number of the milli micro pollutant coming out of this plant if, if we are serious with the enforcement. And I think having GE come on board, yes, they're selling equipment and all that, but they can also be a strong voice for ensuring that the uh, power coming out is not polluting the community. So uh, the, the, the bottom line is it's not either or. We need a mix, and the mix has to include some elements of coal. Germany, US, today, they're all using coal, and I'm, I don't think they're less concerned about the environment that, than, than we are here. So it's just a matter of how do we regulate, how do we enforce the uh, commitment to environmental and uh, human protection in the area. Right. If, if, I, might, if I might uh, just add one little bit, and, and I hope it, will, it makes the point, just behind us here are the railway, the railway whatever, yards. A big workshop, big, you know, the numerical machining complex, and by the way, when I was in the ministry, we were making lathe machines there. There's a smelter. Now, this smelter is only like uh, five tons. But at that time, if you switched it on, the lights went out <laughs> in the city. <laughs> because we simply, so if you want to do serious manufacturing, yeah. you must have a, a, a base load that is consistent and that works. And up to now, that smelter, just behind here, in, I'm telling you, go in the numerical machining complex compound, just go and see that smelter. And it's not a new smelter. It was built in 1992 or 91. And underused because for a long time we could not have su sufficient power to switch it on. If, 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 uh, if government is serious on this manufacturing business, mm -hmm. they have to switch on that smelter. And right. you need a base load that works. Thank you. Let's just take it. Uh, uh, my, 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 my take a short break. I think the, 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 the initiative I really like a lot, and I think it's in the national interest of every African, is this uh, a transmission connection Power where you can offload, onload. It basically means that you can manage uh, surpluses and, and deficits much more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And I really think that is a, a, a great yeah. thing that the African Development Bank is doing. Look, I mean, look at Ethiopia. Ethiopia hardly, hardly uses half of what it produces. But Ethiopia is selling to Djibouti, to Sudan, to Kenya. Now they have an agreement with Tanzania, Rwanda. That is, you know, coal is a commodity to be sold and, and bought in, in, the, in the coal markets, in the, in the energy market. So let's not worry about we have enough. That, that, that's not uh, an argument. Yeah. Maybe when we, we promised when we circle back, of course, we shall, unless you want to talk about the source of energy, uh, the, the, the towing and throwing between <laughs> nuclear and coal. <laughs> We're torn in between the scenes. We have very ambitious uh, uh, plans as a country. Yes, we can actually juggle with coal and nuclear at the same time. While we still have hydro, we still have a geothermal and solar as well. Alikan. Look, on the, on the nuclear issue, I don't think uh, we, we need to look at that. I think we've got sufficient power. Um, I, I think we've got a tremendous green resource uh, energy base. Mm -hmm. I agree with what Gabriel has said. Uh, I accept uh, that you need uh, uh, you know, the right combination. But overall, I think you know, we've done rather well in putting on uh, capacity. We've got to make investment in our transmission lines. And I think normally when I look at what is the problem, it's not about lack of power, it's lack of transmission, the breakdown and that. So I think we've got to put some uh, money to work into that. But overall, I think you know we're doing relatively well. The issue, which I'm sure you're going to come to, is the enormous furore around Kenya power. Yes. Um, and uh, I tend to look at things like the share price, and the share price is probably the worst performing share price at the Nairobi Stock Exchange, bar Parky <laughs> River Cement, <laughs> uh, which has had its own challenges. But when you look at that, that's when you get a message. So there is clearly concern out there. Um, and the question is, is that concern valid? Do they have a clear plan? And, and what's going to happen next? Because um, the, the, the level of noise is, is, is quite worrying and, and the signal in the share price is that there, people are now getting worried 
about the quality and the strength of the balance sheet. And I think that's what Kenya Power need to start addressing. I haven't seen uh, any messaging coming around that area which is so important and I think that's what they've got to focus on. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe we should actually drill deeper with that particular debate. Uh, Kenya Power, should it be uh, maintained as a monopoly or what should happen right now that we know, yes, they've been actually gaming the system and they've admitted to it that yes, uh, we've actually been estimating, you know, the bills and some people have been erroneously, you know, uh, charged or, yeah, or, or overbilled as well. But oh, it really just raises the question of, yes, we still have one uh, a power supplier in this country and that they can afford to game the system because what can we do? We need power. If I wake up in the morning, I can't press my shirt and I need to come to work then. Uh, what that would be a disaster. That would be a disaster. <laughs> can you imagine if you were sitting there with some shirt with creases? Yeah. It would be the end of your career. <laughs> no, I'll tell Kenya's all to Kenya power. Or raise all the accusatory fingers to Kenya power. <laughs> Robert Shaw, yeah? Well, I, I, again, I'm, I've I've stated a few things on this. Um, you wrote a piece about it. Yes. Um, I, I think it's an incredibly... Considering the, the operation or the obligation it has and the value to the economy and the country, I mean, we're all dependent on it. Um, in, in many ways, whether it's to do with, with uh, industrial, domestic or whatever, um, I, I think the operation basically it needs a, a massive overhaul. It's, it, it's, it's uh, when you walk in there, and I have, into their, their offices, I mean the, 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 the main management offices, it's almost like going into a time warp. You, you, you know, you, you really do, I mean you have to find, for a start you have to find a place, you have to find it, then you have to find a place for the parking, and then you get in there, and that's quite an exercise. And uh, then you're told you're in the wrong building, and so you walk across the road and then you get run over. I mean, the whole thing is, and that's just just getting into it. When you're actually in there, um, you, you think to yourself, you sit with all these people and you say, these are the people who are the managers of Kenya Power. Uh, are they up to it? And so, you know, I just. Just my, my overall take on it is, first, we've got to really work at getting Kenya Power to be much more efficient. The question about whether you break it up is a very difficult one. Um, how would you do it? Would you not um, have quite a lot of fracturing of power supply, etc., in the process if you did do it? Um, I think probably first is, is, is make it perform much, much better. Um, and then secondly, yes, encourage all forms of alternative power to not have to, you know, to, to, to set up their own outlets. But I don't think, you know, if you go in there with a sledgehammer and start breaking it up and saying we're going to make it regional or this or that, I think that would actually be very difficult. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hear from uh, Geoffrey Howe also. It has been performing, uh, yes, or, or on, the, on, the, or on the security exchange. It's a listed company. And you know, of course, you can't comment on the monopoly bit. Of course, you don't want it to be <laughs> broken down. But you can tell us how has it been faring with all this brouhaha around it uh, with the power bills and, uh, you know, them coming before the parliamentary committee admitting, yes, there has been a bloated uh, power bills. How is, is the performance? Uh, uh, thanks for helping me there by saying that I, I, it's really a challenging one for me to comment on. It's one of my products. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but I think the, 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 the concern is real. Uh, the cost of power in, in, in Kenya is, is, is really something that is hampering development, hampering our manufacturing sector, um, really affecting um, uh, our, even our lives, I mean, as, as, um, as, as, as Kenyans. But having said that, I think we really need to address what are the key challenges facing Kenya Power. What is the, we need to go to the root cause of it. Yes. Uh, uh, breaking it up, in my view, does not solve it. Mm -hmm. I think it's really looking at the root cause. Um, how much power are they losing uh, through transmission? I mean, are, are they addressing that? Because that's, that's costing, that, that's 
Kenyan is generating power, they're getting all this power, but they're still losing power. I think the last time I checked, it was close to about 15% of what's coming through is, is actually being lost through transmission lines. I'm not too sure about the number now. The other thing is, um, again, uh, operational efficiencies. I mean, you want to call Kenya power and be able to get service. You, want, you, you have a power outage in your area. You, you, need, you need to get immediate uh, response. I think those efficiencies need to be addressed. They have to find ways of addressing that. Um, I think they they're sitting in a in a monopoly, mm -hmm. and, and everybody's watching. And monopoly has its its, its risks, really. Uh, so it's really how do they improve and, and and really strengthen the confidence to to their customers that uh, despite being a monopoly, they're doing things to to continuously improve and 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 and, and, and innovate more to make power affordable. And, 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 and really more, more reachable to mm -hmm. the masses. So I think we, we, Kenya Power needs to probably just step back and look at how, what are the key concerns and address them, the root cause, so that they can be able to respond to, to the concerns from Kenya. So breaking it up, in my view, doesn't really address, address it. It's not the primary solution. No. Let's hear from uh, uh, Governor I'm, I'm, It is surprising that you know, uh, the stock is not doing well because you know, the, the well, two things. First is that, you see, it is not really fully commercial risk because uh, you, 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 can, you would not conceive of a circumstance if they were to default. Uh, I mean, the state would not allow them to go under because what do you do then uh, without power? So, uh, so on just on the basis of that, they should be doing, they should be doing well. And then, of course, uh, you know, we expect... Uh, prices to go down and they are not going down and I agree with the point Gabriel raised earlier you know if we have this excess supply why, why is price <laughs> not responding in the, in the normal manner mm -hmm. uh, we, we would expect mm -hmm. uh, the price to be going down very, very significantly and again now if you connect the dots manufacturing as a sector we, who, how will we compete paying 12 cents or even 10 cents. I mean, when you are competing with other economies who are paying three or four cents, mm -hmm. how, how will we really compete? Uh, so, you know, and I think we, when we are accused uh, as, as governments that sometimes it's as though the left hand and right hand are not talking, mm -hmm. the, the push for manufacturing, the number one thing that is requires to be done is to fix the power and to have power that is competitively priced so that the manufacturers can compete with manufacturers in Asia or manufacturers in South or manufacturers in Egypt. So, you know, uh, um, is the answer to break it up? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, we said and that's the answer. But uh, I would, I would uh, agree with the CEO that uh, the management at, at Kenya Power needs to really look, um, and the shareholders also, uh, to really look at what is happening to this business, why is it not performing in the manner that uh, should be expected, particularly given that they have a monopoly. I think maybe what uh, the, the bank can do is to help us uh, with that thought process uh, that should we liberalize yes. uh, the, the distribution. Because I think the, the number that uh, uh, Ududu was talking to is distribution, not, not, not so much transmission, that many of the transmission lines are reasonable, but distribution, and I believe the figure is even higher than he said, might be 18% mm -hmm. of the power is lost. I mean, it doesn't get to the customer because you know, the lines are old and they, 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 they break up all the time um, and those, those things need to be fixed. I, yes. think, I think there's one point <laughs> worth saying on this. Um, you talk about the shareholders. Um, the government is, give or take a percent or two, um, a, a half shareholder mm -hmm. of Kenya Power. So the government has actually a lot of, a, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. Uh, power there to 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 initiate some change. Mm -hmm. All right. But, uh, let, 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 yes. let me just uh, chime in here. You know, the bar. monopoly by any name yes. for any industry is not good. But there are certain what you call natural monopolies, railways, and to some extent power. But 
power is increasingly now becoming open to competition. And there are ways to demonopolize uh, the power uh, distribution system in Kenya. However, before you go there, you need to have a functioning, efficient utility. I mean, you don't want to demonopolize or devolve uh, non-performing utilities. So uh, the, the first thing to do is, yes, there are issues like any parastatal. Uh, Kenya Power has a lot of uh, challenges and a lot of good people doing a lot of good work in that place, I, I, I think, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, everyone, all of us complain about the cost and so on, uh, from meter reading to transmission losses and so on. But overall, there are good people doing good work there. But uh, before we start thinking about how do we demonopolize, let's talk about how do we ensure it's efficient, that uh, the transmission, the distribution is efficient, the collection, the meter reading, and all that. You know, and there are ways to demonopolize this without necessarily <coughs> breaking it up. You outsource some of it. If you outsource the, 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 the reading and the collection to private companies and you give them an incentive to perform, I bet you the prices will come down and Kenya Power will still be collecting more than they're collecting now. All systems, uh, transmission losses and so on, those can be fixed with smart mm -hmm. meters, smart uh, grades and so on. So there's a lot of work to do before we talk about uh, breaking the monopoly, but monopoly by any name is not good for Kenya or, or anywhere else. But aren't we seeing the monopoly kind of being broken at the fringes? You know, in hard, far from places, you're seeing new mini grids come off, on off board. Grid, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, in a way, yeah. the, the, there is yeah, some yeah. demonopolization yeah, yeah, going yeah. in, in yeah. some areas. I but find. still, yeah. very small. Very and small. Scaling up will be quite costly. No, no, but, 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 uh, but the dead hand of bureaucracy, when you have uh, these small grids, like the one we had in Omo Bay, and then the Energy Regulatory Commission comes and says, you know, uh, you, you don't have the proper documentation and also the licenses to really have a grid. Instead of really encouraging you shut this particular grid, I mean, how do you then help someone within a village who's come up with a source of power, instead of encouraging them, you slap them with some, you know, uh, penalties as well. Is, is that really encouraging? Yeah, <laughs> well, obviously not. <laughs> um, and I think there are many examples of when the bureaucracy, I think, makes mistakes. I mean, the bureaucracy is enormous. It's going to make mistakes. That's a classic one yeah. of making a mistake. And I think um, we've got to be very careful now and just to segue into something else. I see they want to raise taxes on everybody. Bad idea, right? Bad signal. Um, I can't believe we're at this point. Yes. And and, and really, I think we, you know this is a key issue. As that to we need to yeah, yeah. We need to address that. And I think we also talk about revenue collection. But I, I want.